today. Bernie Sanders held a town hall on Fox News on that town hall. People asked some questions. One of the questions was about Joe Biden, what I just brought up. An actual person, I think she was a student uh, at some at a university in Michigan, and she was asking a question about Biden's fitness. And she said, well, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, she, she said, well, Joe Biden, when I hear him answer questions, a lot of times he doesn't make much sense. What do you think about Joe Biden's inability to make sense when he talks? And Bernie Sanders was like, look, I'm not here to disparage Joe Biden. I don't want to make attacks on the man. I, that's not what I do. That's not how I roll. The the host, the commentators, sort of pushed Bernie Sanders to, to elaborate a little further. And they played this clip for Bernie. You just said that two minutes ago. Are you, you forgetting what you said two minutes ago? Being for Are you forgetting already what you said just two minutes ago? I think that Castro has some really uh, legitimate concerns about can he be someone in a long, grueling campaign uh, that can get the ball over the line, and he has every right to call that out. There are definitely moments where you listen to Joe Biden and you just wonder. Are we afraid to say that a lot of his sentences don't make sense, that he's having trouble completing thoughts? Senator, your thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to go at that level uh, in attacking. But Joe and I have, you know, that's for people to decide. All I can say is Joe and I have very significant political differences. And I'm not going to be making, you know, personal attacks on Joe. That's not what I do. Uh, but Joe and I, <laughs> but Brett and Martha, I think, as you know, we have, you know, Joe has been in the Senate and I've been in the Senate and the House for a long time. Joe voted for the war in Iraq. I led the opposition against the war. Joe voted for the Wall Street bailout. I voted against it. Joe has been on the floor of the House over the years talking about the need to cut Social Security, veterans programs, other, better, other programs. I have led the opposition uh, to those cuts. Joe's views on women's issues. Joe has supported the Hyde Amendment, which would deny low-income women to use Medicaid funds for their own reproductive needs. I strongly disagree with that approach. Uh, so on issue after issue, uh, even in terms of how we raise funds for our campaign, Joe has the support of 60, at least 60 billionaires funding his campaign. Let, let me just ask you one yeah. quick question. You, you said a moment ago that he gives seven minute answers. Are yeah. you suggesting that he lacks substance? No, I didn't. Well, I'm just saying, look, I'm here. We're talking about real issues. Right. All right. And we can go on for three hours talking about him. If I'm going to give a speech to people and that was at a, at a rally or event that he held, I, I can't do it in seven minutes. I, you know, there are too many issues. There's health care, education, uh, climate change, uh, immigration reform, criminal justice reform. I don't know how you do that in seven minutes. So all that I'm saying, Martha, is that I think as a candidate for president, you owe respect to the people and you have to have the courage or, or, or the desire to say, hey, this is what I, where I'm coming from. This is my view. You disagree with me? Fine. But I can't do that in seven minutes of the speech. All right. You can't do it in seven minutes of a speech. He can't just tell you everything he needs to tell you so that you can make an informed decision so he can give you exactly what he feels that you deserve, which is a full accounting of where he stands on the issues that matter to your life. That's sort of what a politician, that like should be a requirement of a politician. Now, I know a lot of politicians fall down on it. They do what is known as the ear fatigue, where they talk in circles until they run out the clock, which is something a number of these candidates did this last cycle. But Bernie's not one of those people. I mean, he tells you what he thinks, and then he talks a bit. But he gives you an answer to your question. But I want to go a little bit deeper here, and I want to just call it what it is. Here's the deal. I'm a person who sees it this way. Bernie, you're not going to be able to run this election or win this election being Bernie. I know it would be nice if you could. It would be nice if you could actually show up and demonstrate and talk about issues that matter, and show where you're different, how you're different from Biden, how his voting record is atrocious on a number of issues, how it's not on the right side of history on so many things, whether it be police reform, criminal justice reform, legalizing marijuana, trade deals, war, a, a number of things, banking regulations, the, uh, bankruptcies, uh, Social Security, cutting Medicare, cutting Medicaid, cutting veterans. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot there. I mean, it's a whole lot there. I mean, there's so much there, Bernie. So much there that you're right. You should be able to just stay there. And it'd be a no contest. If you were playing horse, 
You he'd have no buckets. It be he'd you'd be on the letter E like this. Kobe. And he'd just shake his head and walk off. He wouldn't even shoot the shot. Because that's the distance between you and him when it comes to policy. And who has the better policies? Your policy is well above and beyond his policies. Your track record, well above his track record. But that's not good enough because that's not the world we live in, Bernie. Yeah, I'm going to need you, Bernie, to join me in the world of reality. In the world where things ain't right. You already know things ain't right. And I know before you discount it, you say, no, Tim Black, don't tell me that. That's not right. That's not ethical. That's not what we stand for. That's not the way we built this movement. That's not how you build a revolution. Hear me out. We're depending on this. You already beat them in the court of who has best policy. You already beat them on the field of who's done more, who's been real, who hasn't been taking corporate money, who's been fighting for the people. You already beat them in the histrionics of where you stood on the issues when it mattered. You ain't been perfect, but you've been a far cry better than Joe Biden. So you already beat them where you needed to beat them. But see, that ain't how they keep scoring now. And it's too important for you to win. Because I don't want Joe Biden to be my president. And I don't want Joe Biden to be the president for my children. And I don't want Joe Biden just going there and just give Trump a layup. Because let me keep it real, man. He ain't going to beat Trump. He only beats you if you let him. And when I say let him, I don't mean you're not going to try. But if you don't call this shit out what it is, if you let this guy sputter around the toilet, circle the drain, get away with being a horrible candidate all because you don't want to hurt his feelings or you don't want to be seen negative, you know what's going to happen? He's going to win and you're going to have to campaign for him. And I would hate to see that. I don't, I don't think I can go through that again. I'm, look, I'm going to tell you, I don't want to go through that again. You're going to have to call this man unfit. You have to say this man is not equipped. You have to change your entire tenor. It's going to come down to that because he is unfit. It's not name calling. The man is unfit. He can't finish the sentence. Now, now you don't have to do it like I do it. How I would do it, I'd be like, look, man, you need to just go sit your ass down. You need to just go sit down. You're not equipped. You can't handle this. You, the game's over. The lights have caught on at the club. Last call for alcohol. It was a good summer. First day of school's coming. Like, that's me. Now, we all know you got more class than that. You're going to do it with a little bit more, uh, you know, subtle subtlety. It's a way to put these things in a way that's in a light that's... But you can't go too. You can't get too fancy because America's not too fancy. No, no, no. Americans don't want fancy. They don't want puffery. They just want it blunt. Joe, you kind of don't know what the hell you're talking about. Joe, that's not an answer. Joe, where are you now? Joe, maybe you forgot some stuff, but you voted for these horrible bills. Joe, maybe you forgot some stuff, but eh, for eight years you were you were okay with kicking people out of the country. You kicked out more people than Trump. You dropped more bombs than Bush. He, what are you what are you talking about? Respectability. You're part of the reason why we don't have respectability. You're gonna have to do that. And it may be uncomfortable. But like my boxers get in the ring, they all get in the ring, and they always know it's a possibility somebody might not, somebody might miss Christmas. We don't want somebody to miss Christmas. We don't want somebody to eat out a straw. But it could happen. Because that's the game, and we knew the job was dangerous when we took it. And I don't think Joe Biden would have a real problem knifing you in the back from the rooter to the two, the river to the round, the river to the through, running around, 
I don't think he had a problem. I think he licked the blade after it was done. Like, I don't see him as such a nice guy because every time I look at him on the campaign trail, the slightest question, the little bit of resistance he gets, he tells people to go vote for someone else or get the hell off his lawn. That's the Joe Biden I see. I don't see all warm and fuzzy Joe Biden. I see a guy with policies that's going to kill people. He's literally going to kill people. He has policies that will let people die. Joe Biden, being against the policies that you're supporting, see, this is how I see it. The policies that you support in your campaign are so fundamental and so ethically sound, so humanitarian-based, that to oppose them, to me, is akin to wanting to kill people. Yeah, like if you don't want if you don't want young black men to have the ability to go get an education that they don't have to go 40 years in debt or 30 years or 25 years in debt to get, then you are pushing them in this system of, uh, and then you got mass incarceration and you don't want to legalize marijuana, you are pushing them to a life of crime or streets or a combination of something that leads them down the path of either death early, and then you don't want to give the medical care, you're killing black people. They're killing black people, Bernie. A, a humane person would just walk up and pop you in the back of the head. But no, these fuckers are killing us slowly. And that's, I would love reparations, but they're killing us, Bernie, and you're going to let them kill us because you don't want to be mean? No, be mean, yo. Be mean because he's letting us die. 500,000 people, you say it. I don't need to preach, guys. Look, Bernie supporters, you don't have to agree with me. It's fine. We can disagree. I still love you, but you need to hear this shit. There are people dying on the street every day. We care more about dogs than we care about people, okay? Don't be like Republicans and think every person who lives in a tenth city wants to live there. They just don't want to work for a living. Or every person that's, uh, that's uh, addicted to an opiate chose this life. Yeah, this is what they wanted. They always said, hey, I don't want to be a ballerina. I want to be a meth whore. This is what I want to do. No, I, I don't believe that. So the humane thing to do, it's counterintuitive. The humane thing to do is to put Biden down. Oh, put him down. You can put him down slow. You can put him down softly. You can be gingerly about it. You can be, you know, whatever you want to be. But he's got to go down because there can't be two nominees. And they already going to tell. They are going to try to steal it at the damn convention. So you can't play. You can't be too nice. Don't be so nice. We got, we got, look, the, these other candidates who know that Biden's not the guy, like that Biden shouldn't lead, he shouldn't lead a course, he shouldn't lead a karaoke night, he shouldn't lead a, a, a line of people walking to the refrigerator, he should not lead anything. At very best, he should be stuck in the middle where he can't do too much harm, and the person in front can watch him, the person behind him can watch him. He should not be in the lead of anything. He can't take up the rear because he'll meander who knows where, and then find him a couple blocks over in a nightgown singing show tunes. And if he's in the front, he'll lead everybody to their demise. The bottom line is Joe Biden is not equipped, man, and these candidates know it. We got Kamala Harris coming out for... Joe Biden, she know Joe Biden ain't right. Cory Booker, Julian Castro, Julian Castro said. Did you just forget what you just said? See, that was when it was, uh, that's when the word was handed down. Forget Joe, get rid of him. It's because they all follow a script, you know. They're all following the words of whatever's handed down on high to them. At this time, when Joe, when, when Julian Castro said this horrible, <laughs> horribly true, uh, when he made this, this statement that cut deep on Joe Biden, they were still operating under the concept that Joe Biden, he wasn't go, they didn't want him. That they had somebody else to stop you. They didn't need Joe. When, when Cory Booker, backing up Julian Castro, said, uh, uh, you just wonder. 
you, you, you know, you, you just wonder. Like, can he take the ball across? Can he? Can he? Can he? Can he take the ball across the goal? Can he? Joe Scarborough, are we just gonna sit here and pretend that this guy isn't nuttier than a Snickers bar? Are we just gonna? I mean, this was the way they were talking, so they all know it. So, Cory Booker, who who was horrible, horrible league. Like supportive of Joe Biden after knowing this, after being on the record of saying Joe ain't the guy, he goes today. Cory Booker endorses Joe Biden. Here they go at a speech that Joe Biden gave, thanking Cory Booker for his support, his endorsement. Look at Cory Booker's face as Joe Biden forgets basic shit he should know. This is a movement to defeat Donald Trump and restore the soul of the country. And it's a campaign for everyone. Our campaign's for everyone who's ever been knocked down, counted out, left behind. And I hope, I hope you'll all join us. Together, I think we can win back the House, we're going to keep the House, increase it, and flip the Senate. We talked about that? Yeah. We're going to flip the Senate. I see, see. See, we're going to have a lot of, we don't have time for a lot of cut cut cards here. We don't have a lot of time to soften it up. It's what it is. Cory Booker was standing there listening to Joe Biden, and Joe Biden, he just said, we're not only going to take the White House, we're going to take back the House. And Cory Booker's eyes fell to the floor as the shame washed over his bald head. And I know what that's like being a bald-headed guy. I vouch for people who didn't deserve it later. I, I thought better of it. I wish I hadn't done it. I wish I hadn't lent my support to people. I jumped out there. I thought they were good people. I found out later there's some scumbags, opportunists, say anything, trash your name, dog, 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 horrible people. But I didn't know it at the time. And I know what that looks, that look, that look of. I know what that looks like. It doesn't feel good. That's the look Coy Booker has on his face. It's, you know, when you set your friend up, you know, girls, you set your friend up with a guy at, at work. And, you know, she was looking for a good friend, a friend with a good job. and She's been dating some losers lately. You set her up on a blind date with a guy, and the guy turns out to be a complete moron. And, and she's telling you about the horrible time. And she's like, I thought you said he was a good guy. And you're like. So he, he showed up with no underwear on? You know, you just feel bad. You know, because that's you. You did that. But you didn't know you had all their good intentions. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't know, see, that doesn't, that doesn't even work, right? Because Corey doesn't have good intentions. His intentions is to stay paid. His intentions are to keep the money in his pocket and keep in good graces with the power structure within the Democratic Party. His intentions are no different than Kamala Harris or anyone else in the Democratic Party who endorsed Joe Biden. All right? This is real. It's no different than Pete Buttigieg looking out for self. Anyone ever doubt that Pete was looking out for self? Amy Klobuchar, careerist, opportunist, looking out for self. She could care less. Right? So that's what these people are doing. Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernard Sanders, I implore you to do the thing that's against your character, which is to go outside your character and to call it what it is, straight-faced right through the camera. And no, you're doing this out of righteousness. This is righteousness. You will save many. Literally, you will save lives, sir. And I, look, I'm not one of these people to think of delusional that all of a sudden you're just going to walk in the office and all problems will be gone. No, we'll still have to work. And we're going to get to that towards the end of this, this conversation. Because I think some people are a little bit delusional about this thing we got going on here and how hard it's going to be. But make no mistake about it, Mr. Sanders, Senator Sanders, he got to go down. There can only be one. And he's going to kill people. Do your duty. <laughs> 